welcome to the Ash Wednesday service. I'm Carol Lindsay and I'm worship leader tonight. Today marks the beginning of the season of Lent, a season of reflection and repentance in which we repent in ashes and dust. The ashes of Ash Wednesday are a symbol of our confession and our repentance for the inconsiderate, unloving, uncontrolled and ungodly aspects of our lives. The call to worship this evening. We worship God as Lent dawns, keenly aware of our weaknesses and our sins. Therefore, we come humbly before God with a song on our lips and repentance in our hearts. We come to pray, we come to worship, we come to be forgiven once again. Please join me in the unison Ash Wednesday prayer. Come and fill us, Holy Spirit. As we enter this season of Lent, we promise to lay aside the routine of our daily lives that we might focus on you. During this solemn season, help us choose intentional calm over distraction and busyness. Help us listen more and talk less. Help us quiet our minds and slow our step that we may move closer and closer to you. Amen. Our opening hymn tonight is Breath on, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. You may stand if you would like and are able. may be seated. The scripture tonight comes from Matthew 6 verses 1 through 6 based on the message translation of the Bible. The world is not a stage. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure, play actors, I call them, treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks, just do it quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? That's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. The litany for Ash Wednesday is one we will read in unison. Please follow along. Oh God, Today we are reminded of the temporary nature of our lives here on earth. We are children of the dust, 
and to the dust we will return. It is by your spirit and your power that we are given life. You are the source of all hope and life. We enter now a season of repentance that we may turn away from our selfishness. We set aside some of our comforts that we may turn our attention to you. Cast now our transgressions far from us as far as the east is from the west. We mourn the profound disruption that happened in your garden. Please bring us back into your sacred presence. We rejoice in the perfect work Christ has done on earth. Christ came to fix the disconnect and reconcile us to you. Prepare our hearts, O God, for the resurrection life. For you bring life from dust and beauty from the ashes. Prepare our hearts for the joy of your arrival. You are the author of gladness. You script joy to be birthed from morning. Prepare our hearts to encounter the fullness of your presence. May we fully embrace the praise you bring forth from the depths of our despair. Amen. Invitation to the observance of a Lenten discipline. The early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the Christian church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were, were prepared for baptism, and people who had committed sins that had been separated from the community of faith were reconciled again by repentance and forgiveness, and they were restored to active participation in the life of the church. During Lent, the whole congregation is reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need for each one of us to renew our personal faith in God. I invite you, therefore, to observe a holy Lent by reflection, by self-examination, by repentance, by prayer, and by self-denial, by reading and studying God's word with a new fervor and a new interest. To make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal limitations, let us now bow before God, our creator and our savior. We bow our spirits, we hear God's word again, and then before we leave, we will allow ourselves to be marked to show that this Lent makes a difference. Won't you now hear the remainder of God's word? Still reading from Matthew, verses, uh, Matthew 6, verses 16 through 21. When you practice some appetite-denying discipline to better concentrate on God, don't make a production out of it. It might turn you into a small-time celebrity, but it won't make you a saint. If you go into training inwardly, act normal outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. God doesn't require attention-getting devices he won't overlook what you are doing. He'll reward you well. Don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths and corroded by rust or worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasure in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is is the place you will most want to be and end up being. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Amen. A Lenten reflection. What does it all mean? I don't know about you, but for some of us, when we've seen people go through Lent, they look like what the scripture describes. They look sad and downtrodden, and they talk about the things that they can't do. And it sounds like a horrible period. But really, what is Lent? Who's it about? And what's it leading up to? In his book, Unrevealed Until Its Season, A Lenten Journey with Hymns, the Reverend James C. Howell writes these words. When our Ash Wednesday service has ended, I linger in front of a mirror, not to inspect the quality of the pastor's smudge, but to ponder that I have just been marked with the horror and the hope of Jesus' cross. Howell continues, no other hymn captures so thrillingly the paradox of this horror and this hope than Isaac Watts's When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. We survey the cross, he writes. We don't just glance at it. We measure it carefully. We size it up. We consider every angle. For Reverend Howell, when I survey the wondrous cross captures the sense of horror mingled with hope. And that's what helps Howell move into an attitude of repentance and reconsideration. For me, it's a different hymn. Not so much when I survey the cross, but were you there? Was I there when they crucified my Lord? Was I there when they nailed him to the tree? Think of the crosses that you see in a lot of churches. Think about our cross. Oh, it's not here. Where's oh, there it is. See our cross. Have you ever noticed the difference between the cross here and the cross out in the fellowship hall? They don't look the same, do they? Have you noticed them? Maybe I should ask that first. Did you notice how nice the one is up over the clock out there? It's metal. It's pretty. This one, not so much. And yet both of them are prettier than the cross. Consider the meaning of the cross, not how it's presented, but what does it represent? Howell comments on this. He says, too often, we sanitize the cross, preferring shiny wood or even, I mean, smooth wood or shiny metal. The original cross would have been of olive wood, gnarled wood. And not only that, it would have human flesh stuck to it. Crucifixion was a gruesome, horrifying, painful, public humiliation reserved for criminals. Were you there? This is a time for us to imagine that we were there. For me to imagine, for you to imagine. How would it affect the way you live if you had been there? Would it, would it affect the way you live? Would it affect the way you serve in the church? If I had been at the cross, if you had been at the cross, how we look at others, how we look at ourselves, how we look at the world, I dare say, would drastically change. Our testimony about who Jesus is and what he did, voluntarily going to that horrible cross, would probably change everything about us. This is a season to remember and to prepare for that event and what comes after. Imagine in your mind the real cross with the wood that's not so pretty, but that's really gnarled and then tainted with human flesh. Think about the single wooden cross that held the body of Christ. 
It was not lovely, it was not smooth, and it was not shiny. Instead, it was a sure and sturdy monstrosity, a torture device reserved for those people known as criminals, for those people deemed less than human. In his day, by God's design, many people, not just Jesus, were labeled less than human. And so in that culture, he, Jesus, was just another criminal. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they crucified your Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? This Lent, let us not gloss over those words or whatever words, whatever song, whatever images take you back to that cross because it looms before us as Lent dawns. This Lent, consider the monstrous device of death that is also the glorious source of eternal life. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Of course not. But thank God Jesus was the one who was there. So tonight marks the beginning of Christ's journey from the crash to the cross. As he moves toward that beautiful, horrible tree, we move with him during Lent. It is a time for introspection. It is a time to consider what we do and why we do it. It's a time to disregard how others applaud our actions, save the applause of our God. Were you there when his assailants, unable to see who he was, unable to determine that he was God, were you there in the moment when they took his life and the revolution of redemption began? Physically, none of us were there. But now is the time to consider what it all means, why we do what we do, who we are, and who we serve. What have we done to put the nails in the cross for Jesus? Crash to cross, death to life, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. What did you do to send Jesus to the cross? And what will you do to make his sacrifice worthwhile? These and many other questions are waiting for us to consider them as our Lenten journey with Christ begins today. Amen. We will now have special music, Touch Me With Ashes, by Deb Schnitke. Thank you. Kitty, hey, hey, 
I'm preparing to pray over the ashes. Um, before I do that, I have to apologize to the, the booth. I said that I would be up front the whole time, but just so you know, um, I moved down here because it didn't dawn on me for you to get the ashes imposed, you'd have to go up the stairs. So is it okay that I'm down here, you guys? Okay, okay. Thanks be to God and thank you for your graciousness, but I didn't think about stairs and we can't have pride when we're coming into Lent, right? This is a time of um, being honest before God. So I also want to put this out there before we move into the actual imposition of ashes. This is not a time for pride. So if there's anyone here who needs me for whatever reason to come where you are instead of you coming forward, um, if you would just kind of raise your hand, I will come around at the end. So just kind of keep that in mind. And without further ado, let us go to God as we pray over the ashes that are here. Almighty God, you have created us from the dust of the earth. To us, may these ashes be a sign of our mortality and our genuine repentance that we may remember it is only by the gift of your grace that we are given eternal life through Jesus going to that tree. Thank you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God bless these ashes. May they touch us that we might remember. Amen. Now, as you are able, won't you come forward? I will put on my mask. Just keep in mind what I have here are Q-tips so that I'm not going to be touching everybody over and over. That way we keep it um, safe. Um, but as you are able, come forward and I will mark you with God's sign of the cross.
will, please prepare to join me in the prayer following the imposition of the ashes. O oh God, we beg you to fill us with your Holy Spirit that those things we do on this day may please you and that the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, lived in service of others, and that at the least we may come into eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Won't you please stand for the last two verses for the, our hymn of the night, Breathe on me, breath of God. And we have much for which to be thankful. So as we embark on this Lenten journey, as we go forward into this season, moving toward Easter, let us go in peace. Each of us remembering that we are but dust and ashes by ourselves, unworthy to be called the people of God, but also remember that you who had no status and no forgiveness on your own, have been claimed as God's own people, God's beloved son, God's beloved daughter, members of God's own family. That's how precious you are. That's the burden of living that you have in this world. But guess what? During this season of Lent, we can make sure we are up to the task. We can make Jesus proud of going to that gnarly cross for us. So let's go forth in proper humility, but let's go forth in the pride of the spirit, for we are God's because of what Jesus did. By the grace of God, by the love of God, and by the power of God, go forth and be God's Lenten church. Amen. Thank you.